Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and with the wipe coming, it's time to prepare for a new patch. Today, we'll be thinking about the best approaches to progression, things to look out for, and some tips, starting with the fairly well-known but slightly unusual way to begin questing. On loading up the game and choosing your character, you can start identifying all the items across the traders, and, if necessary, some on fence too. The idea behind this is the small amount of XP you get from identifying everything possible before you even leave your stash gets you to level 2. This is important because from here you can visit Mechanic, pick up the introduction task and head to Woods to pick up Jaeger's letter and access him as a trader. The especially nice thing about this is that if you don't find the 133 shotguns for Prapple's debut whilst doing the quest, you can buy them from Jaeger straight away without any delay after your 5 scav kills. This is assuming that Jaeger gets locked again behind introduction. Currently you can buy from him regardless, which changed after the Lightkeeper extortion event, which I'm guessing is just an end of wipe thing, but I could be wrong. One of your short term goals should be getting to level 5 as quickly as possible, as this is when daily quests get unlocked. These can help you accelerate up towards level 15, presumably where the flea will be this time too, as it worked well last wipe, but this isn't confirmed yet. However, before we go into more of the quest and progression stuff, a few quick points on weapons. We never really know what random changes are coming to Tarkov on each wipe, but I would be very surprised if we don't see some kind of change to recoil, or at least a rebalancing of some sort. If we do, this will throw out everything that we know now, but if it's not that radical, then it's very likely that the UMP will dominate at the beginning of this wipe just like the last one, after players worked out that it was incredibly good with the changes in 12.12. We had a brief discussion on stream about how the UMP fares versus the PP-19 early on, and honestly, the difference in unmodded performance is pretty staggering. You don't need to do like meta at the beginning of the right? That's a stock UMP. It kind of climbs up to... It, it climbs basically to this point here. So look, look at the difference in recoil, guys. Like, it's, it's, it's insane, the difference in recoil. Not to mention the match FMJ ACP rounds significantly outperform the 9mm PST round, which is all we have access to early on. The 7 black handled knife barter was the king last time, the main trick being you could find them often on fence. This may not be the case super early as players in theory should sell them to Jaeger for a small bit extra, but keep a lookout and save your own to get access to it. The mechanic barter is less worthwhile, but possible I guess if you end up with tons of barter loot, and it's also not impossible to get Peacekeeper 2 really early on because all you have to do is level up your cash with him. This will unlock both the UMP for purchase as well as the M80 round, which, if everything is the same as last time, was continuously sold out last wipe once enough people got to him. Combined with the RFB from Skier 2, and these two weapons can easily carry you through the early to mid wipe no problem. Outside of this, for day 1, the basic SKS from Prapper 1 is always great as it uses 762 PS rounds and is very cheap, or the VPO 136 from Skier 1 if you prefer 30 round detachable mags. The 20 round mags for the SKS are quite pricey on Peacekeeper at about 10k each which closes the price gap between these two guns significantly. One last thing is that shotguns are actually super viable. You'll probably find lots of people using the double barrel for questing, but personally I prefer the revolver shotty at a minimum. Last wipe, Express Buckshot was sold out extensively because you got one more pellet with 9 rather than 8 per shot, however bear in mind that of the starting shells, only the 5.25mm Buckshot can tap heads with a single pellet, and even then it's only within 10 meters, and at that range you'll probably hit them with 2 anyway. This may sound weird, but it's because the 5.25mm Buckshot is much slower, so the damage drop off is also slower. This is definitely for another video, so I'm not going to go into it too much here. If you want maximum power, Magnum Buckshot is craftable at the Workbench 1. Now we need to talk about keys. This is broadly the same as Last Wipe for solos, but with the RMT changes, players cannot drop keys to each other anymore, although they can still go into raid together and open doors for each other. For checking, otherwise known as the Bronze Pocket Watch quest, don't forget to go to dorms to collect the key for the truck like I do every wipe, although you'll probably find someone else open the cab in the first few days of raiding anyway. After this, we'll ignore Shootout Picnic because it doesn't open up any other quests, and we'll go to Woods again later so you can double up on these to save time, but delivery from the past needs the Tarcone Director's Office Key as it's the one where you get the package from Customs and then drop it off in Factory. Therapist's third quest, Operation Aquarius Part 1 at level 6, also requires a Dorm's 206 key, and another later quest from Prapple, Bad Rep Evidence, needs the portable bunkhouse key. Doing jacket runs is the best way to get keys in general, but I find it a bit tedious and is subject to a lot of random chance. 
So two alternatives to bear in mind is the seven pile of meds for a 206 key from Therapist One and the food barter for the director's office key. Pile of meds are found fairly frequently in many loot containers and the food barter, while looking like quite a few parts at first glance, bears remembering that the army crackers can be bought directly from Therapist also at level one, so it's nowhere near as bad as it looks. Two cans of ice green tea and two squash spread are fairly readily found in the Isles of Goshan over on this side of the map. Unfortunately, using these potential shortcuts will still leave you with the issue of the bunkhouse key. This one has no alternative other than finding it, which is a bit tricky. However, we do get keys spawning on our scav too, and this is good advice for everyone, not just with keys. If you want to get the fastest progression possible, run your scav a lot. Yes, I know you primarily want to be playing PMC raids for that questing, EXP and skill progression, but even the quick factory sprinter exit runs can help fund your PMC missions, deliver rare items, keys and barter items that are painful to get otherwise, and also starts to level up your scav karma 0.01 at a time. Alternatively, you could do key runs even with your scav, but with plenty of PMCs hitting jackets, I don't think this is necessarily the best way unless you feel like you're behind the pack on progression generally and slightly out of sync with other players' quest goals at the time. If you're still having no luck with the bunkhouse key, you can either continue to jacket run and scav run, ask around to see if someone can open the door for you, or wait around until the end of the raid to see if someone else has opened it. At the start of the wipe, this is a pretty nice strategy because early on plenty of people will be going past and doing it, and potentially you could even use VoIP to get some friendly interaction and complete these quests collaboratively. A lot of this happened last time. In the meanwhile, with the hideout you should be focused on getting the lavatory to level 2. This requires level 1 water collector and level 1 vents, and obviously lavatory 1. Water collector also requires security 1, so there are a few prerequisites to complete before you can get here, but this opens up the 60 round magcraft, which is one of the biggest blockers before getting to the Punisher series, which is a big goal of many players. It is technically possible to get these in the ZP014 bunker on woods near to Scav House and the outskirts extract, but it's been a bit hit and miss in the past, and secondly, we have no idea what they might change with regards to the spawn rate, as these things often get tinkered with, so I'd plan to craft them and work accordingly. This will require you to keep three keck tapes lying around and also obtain a flat screwdriver. Now, I could be wrong about this as well, but with the changes made to tools that are now not single use, I can well see BSG making these types of items much rarer as you can now use them forever once obtained. Interestingly, because of the RMT changes as well here, you cannot bring them for your friends either if they weren't in the same raid, as they will lose their finding raid status and be deleted if dropped, meaning that you have to find them yourself, or at least be in the same squad in raid when someone else finds it to give to you. Just something to be aware of, we'll see what happens when the new patch hits. Speaking of spawn rates, every Tarkov player is aware of the pain that can come from gas analyzers, and while they are possible to craft in the hideout now at Workbench 1, it takes a long time and is pretty expensive on materials. Same goes for the USB flash drives that often block players from progressing to Peacekeeper through Skier. Honestly, the best approach is to wait for the wipe, see what people are saying who progress through the game the fastest, and adjust from there. I don't think it's worth worrying about where to get these right now, as it's totally possible that the spawn rates and locations change for the items in super high demand even as we're going through in the first few days, because BSG have been known to do that in the past. So onto a few other things that didn't fit in neatly elsewhere. Therapist will give you a free post raid heal before you reach level 5, which you can take advantage of, but in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter that much monetarily. If you have spare meds, it's potentially more compelling to heal yourself with those, as it gives heal XP towards your progression, rather than just trying to save a bit of money. One item to keep an eye out for as you go is the PM Pistol. This is needed for Punisher 5, and is really annoying if you didn't keep them as the spawn rate is not that high, and the PMT version doesn't count. The AK-74N for that quest can be crafted, and the Find in Raid M4 from Punisher 4 can be turned in straight away for it in Punisher 5, so it's really just the pistols that are a mega pain. Seven lower half masks get an honourable mention for Punisher 2 as well. For the Gunsmith series of quests, loads of people get stuck on the Arsas, which is Gunsmith 6. At Peacekeeper 3, you can get one for eight bear and eight USEC dog tags from players level 15 and up, and I personally think it is easier than trying to find a marked room key or hitting weapons boxes for the chance of getting one. Also, a reminder that the guns for Gunsmith have to be at least 60 durability. This requirement came as a bit of a surprise last time, and it's not mentioned when looking at the quest text, so just bear it in mind. Finally, I've been asked quite a bit recently about players looking to upgrade to EOD in the light of Arena being free for those users. If you're thinking about it and also likely to get Arena, it's kind of a no-brainer at this stage in my opinion. 
There is time to decide, Nikita confirmed that EOD will still be available for players to buy up until the release of Tarkov 1.0, which as we know could be quite some time away, and the arena itself is only starting to be tested in a few months from now. So my best suggestion, if you were considering it, is to wait for the next sale and then upgrade your copy. This would give you Arena for free, plus any potential future DLC too, whatever that may entail, as well as all of the regular benefits from EOD. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons who help to support the channel, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, good luck in the next wipe, and as always, have fun in your raids.